What is good, everybody? Juliana Page here. I've got my my cozy, comfy clothes on. It's been raining here, and I got my my night cream on, and I'm about to hop on a team call. But I had a word that was burning, so I had to come on here and share. And this one is so so good. I really feel like something we all to some degree grapple with in our life is really who am I? Why am I here? We do. We, we fight that. Whether, whether we're a kid and we're asked that for the first time, what do you want to be when you grow up? Or whether we're faced with school <laughs> and making a huge investment in what we're going to major in, or when we graduate and realize that what we studied, there isn't a career opportunity that suits that or that you could just stay until you retire at, right? So we can go through all of this then the world will paint a picture of what something is and we'll even come up with our own idea of what something is, but that might not have anything to do with our purpose. So I wanted to open with a thought. Let me pull it up here. I wrote it down. Here's the thought. Time is too short. The best way to waste time is by not knowing the purpose of your life. The best way to waste time is to not know the purpose of your life. And so the encouragement with that, I, I mean, I think that that's a, one of those truths that just hits you, <laughs> right? You're just like, oh, that's true, right? And then for some, that can create some anxiety. Like, I don't know what my purpose is, but the encouragement is to use wisdom to empower yourself and to seek wisdom, right? No matter where you are, no matter what season, it's not too late and you have no excuse. Seek wisdom, right? So I expanded on this and I'm going to turn this into who knows the secret about you. I'm going to turn this into that, but I want to give you a little bit more context on it. So the next thing that I think it's really important to know, especially in a culture that is groomed to want instant success, a culture that's accustomed to seeing fame happen fairly quickly, or it seems like it comes easy, a culture that doesn't often celebrate the process or reveal the behind the scenes of what really self-discipline or healing or growth and all of that looks like, you know, for somebody to have some of these anointings that they have, they've had a process, they've had a journey to get there. It isn't just like this. So because we don't see that all the time, we see beauty constantly, which is a great thing. We don't really understand often that that time is short or we're not given an accurate demonstration of what it takes to really steward well what you're given. Okay. So here's the thing. People are not looking for you. Newsflash. They're looking for what you carry. So all of those selfies, all of that exterior stuff, I would argue is just covering up the inside. So for example, in my own experience, this is what I believe. I believe the less you're led to do all of that, now I believe it's beautiful and it's necessary and it has its place, but if you are led to that to the degree that you can't show up without makeup, that you can't just not be without those things, like they've almost become idols for you, then there's something that it's covering. I would argue it's covering an insecurity, a place that you don't feel confident about in yourself, right? Because what I've seen is insecurities are loud. And confidence is quiet. Confidence doesn't need to proclaim itself and show itself off. It just is. Right? And it has its own grace. It has its own flow. And I've noticed that as well with those that really know their purpose and who they are. They don't need to go around and show anybody that. They're just busy about their business. And accolades come because their, in their influence speaks. But it's not coming from them. If you really look closely, they're not the ones that are pumping themselves up. It's coming from other people who they've touched or impacted. Okay. So people are not looking for you, meaning they're not going to just come like running after you, right? They're looking for what you carry because that can impact their life. Okay. So in other words, if you don't manifest what you're carrying, which I call self mastery, and it's really learning how to develop your potential and work out of you, what God's put in you, and self-manifestation is another way to say it. If you don't manifest what you're carrying, the world will ignore you. You probably have seen that. You probably have experienced that. And maybe there was a time or a season where that did not feel good. I know for me personally, I had a lot of turbulence growing up. 
So I started to put my identity in being useful. Okay. And then I put my identity in being a people pleaser and a gap filler and just like the one that could make it happen, could facilitate process. Right. And then I started channeling what I couldn't control because a lot of things were out of control. The crazy making, I started channeling that into athletics. So I became an academic, I became an athlete and I had identity up in that. Then my adoptive father had remarried. So we had a blended family that literally blended the day after I graduated high school. And then I was off to college that after that summer. So I worked two jobs, was never home, never really blended. And then I'm at college. So there was no transition. <laughs> there was a lot of things that shifted and there was no way to process that, let alone all the years of accumulated trauma and pain and dysfunction that had never really been processed or dealt with, right? And now I'm in college. Great. <laughs> so you can imagine that was a time where I was really grappling with this. So it was early. I was probably, oh, Lord, I don't know how old I was. I want to say 16, 17, because I was younger. I had one of those like birthdays where they didn't know where to put you. So I'm, you know, as early as 10, I was really dealing with a lot. But now at 17, I'm really trying to figure out who am I? Why am I even here? I know I'm not going to be an athlete for the rest of my life. So like, what the heck? Like, what am I going to do? <laughs> so that was really, really nerve wracking. And I felt the very real experience that being out of sight, I was also out of mind. I didn't feel like I had a sense of home. I didn't really felt a huge disconnect. I felt like all those years of being useful and uh, making a place for myself were for what? And, and now what? Right? So if I'm not if I'm not part of this family, so to speak, if I don't have a role here and I don't know what that was about and I'm not an athlete or, you know, I can't be just an academic the rest of my life. What am I going to do in this world and how can I make a living at it? Because I was also told and I am a very creative person, but I, I wasn't developed in those things. I was really told to do the responsible thing. So I learned that creativity was not responsible. Right. And I didn't know how to process that. So I was really in a place like I can't do what I'm led to do and what I'm inspired to do because that's not accepted by the world, meaning I'm not accepted by the world. So I'm really fighting this. I don't know who I am. I don't know where I'm going and I don't know what to do. And it was so heavy. So I started studying this work 17 years old because I was hungry for knowledge. I was hungry for information. I had no clue where I was going to get it. And no, how, no clue how I could make my way in the world. Okay. So later, I've had many moments of that. But I will say, I remember too, this truth hitting me again. I had just finished a grad degree. I had finished a master life coaching program. I had driven across the country on a prompting that I had. And I was sitting in an empty condo by myself. No furniture or anything because I just took whatever I had in my car. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, wow, do you know what I mean? Like, it's just that felt like it represented my soul at the time. Like there was just this emptiness, right? That I had to learn how to live, right? Again, so just wild. There's been many seasons of starting over like that, but that weight. Now I, I've learned a way to really lean into that. And I want to tell you how I've shifted it because that weight can feel unbearable. That fear of being by yourself and having to restart can really, really be intimidating. But I want to highlight some other points. Reality, just because you exist doesn't mean you'll be successful. I was one of those uh, kids too that wasn't told constantly growing up that you can do whatever you put your mind to, you know, I really wasn't uh, praised or, or supported in that way. Right. Um, so I was afraid of this, that I wasn't going to be successful, right? Like, because that would be the ultimate failure, but just because you exist doesn't mean you'll be successful. You really do have to work out that process and what's in you. Because you are on the planet doesn't mean people are going to notice you. That's true, too. It might feel different on social media, but again, people are not looking for you. They're looking for what you're, you carry and how that can impact them. Um, okay. The reason, because most of us live on the earth but never manifest ourselves. 
Have you seen that? Like I, I've never been one of those people that went to any reunion, high school, college, grad school, whatever. I never went to any of my reunions, but I'd imagine that that would be a place where you can see how many of those people actually manifested their potential so far. Interesting, right? My most important goal is self-manifestation and leaving the earth tapped out, right? Like when I, whenever you have those questions, like what's your biggest fear? Mine would be that I never did or I never discovered or I never got busy about what I was actually here to do. That was the thing that always in some kind of way felt like it tormented me in a sense. And I know that, that word's heavy, but in the sense that I couldn't stop thinking about it. It was always something that was heavy on my heart. But as a double-edged sword, that also gave me this courage or this bravery or this strength or this capacity to take these big risks and move across the country several times and learn and develop and start over and recover and all these things, right? So here's the thing though. We all need to feel, these are needs. We all need to feel a sense of purpose, a sense of value, a sense of significance, a sense of importance, a sense of meaning, a sense of fulfillment, a sense of personal power, and a sense of success. These are needs. We all need to feel that, okay? But we're not going to feel that if we're not self-manifesting, okay? Now, I know for me, for many years, I lived without these needs being met. And I thought that that was normal, right? That's just how it is because your exposure will limit your consciousness in a lot of ways, right? So when I finally woke up and really realized that this is just not acceptable, I started changing my life and started pursuing things differently. So my encouragement is, is you can discover your gift and live with purpose. And as you do that, that's when you really feel whole and life will really become more fluid for you. And you'll really start to see that you'll attract different kind of people and you'll really add value to people around you. So my encouragement is to become a person of value. And I have a couple of things here. The easiest thing to do is set aside time every day. If you've never done this before and discover what your gift is and really what moves you, right? So you can ask yourself what activities, topics, or issues energize you. When do you lose track of time? You just get caught up in a flow. When do you find yourself in a state of flow? What comes naturally to you? When do you, what do you find easy and interesting? What would you research nonstop? When are you rewarded and what are you happy to share with others? So the more you put effort in discovering your gift, the more you'll start to uncover and unearth, so to speak. And there's nothing lost in this time. You always gain something when you engage in self-discovery and it will just affect your well-being so, so much. So now I want to transition into who knows the secret of who you are, because what I want to hold up is that it's not good, bad, right, or wrong. Like if you have lived your life and you don't feel like you know who you are, and it's common to put our identity in things like I mentioned. So I'm an academic, I'm an athlete, I'm a sister, I'm a daughter, I'm a parent, I'm a mom, I'm a dad, I'm a friend, I'm a wife, I'm a husband, I'm a CEO. Like it's really easy to put your identity in those things, but th that's also extremely limiting if that's how you view yourself because you're so much more than that. Okay, so the secret of why you're here, that is actually something really amazing. And I believe that you discover the truth about you in God. And when you do, you become spiritually alive. You become vibrant, joyful, spirit led. You're just on a totally different plane, if you want to look at it that way. So I want to give you a couple of scripture truths to really help you receive this word. Okay. So first one, how do I know these things to be true? Well, Ephesians 2.10 says this, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good work. So this lets you know that I'm created by God and I'm created for good works, which God prepared beforehand. So before you were even born, before you even took your first breath on this earth, God prepared good works for you that you should walk in them. Whoop, that's a good one. All right. Second Corinthians four, seven, but we have this treasure, Holy spirit in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power of God and not us. 
Okay, so check it out. But we have this treasure, the spirit of God living on the inside of us, if you're born again, in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So all of the good works that we do, that is because we're empowered by the spirit and walking it out by the spirit of God. Okay, it's not by our works, but by the spirit. Okay. Another one. This is John 14, 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you. So where do we learn about the secrets of who we are and about these mysteries that are far too great for us to know? Some, some mysteries are. The word tells us that. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that God has said, all that Jesus has said, right? Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. So powerful. So that's letting you know that even in those moments where you feel stuck, even in those moments where you feel unclear, even in those moments where you feel like you're not being led. Sorry, my neighbors are like banging on their um, recycling bin. <laughs> oh my goodness. But the spirit himself intercedes for us. So that is a confidence that you have. Even when I don't know, God will intercede for me. Galatians 5, 22, 23. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. So this lets you know when you are walking with spirit, you will start to manifest these things. Okay. Couple more. The secrets about you and who you are are found in God. This comes from Proverbs 25 two. It is the glory of God to conceal things, but the glory of Kings is to search things out. So God hides your purpose, your destiny in you. People can't tell you what that is. Teachers, parents, God can tell you what that is and confirm that to you. It comes through revelation, revelation. God will reveal it to you. Okay. Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things belong to the Lord, our God, but the things that are revealed belong to us and to our children forever that we may do the words of the law. Okay. And then a reminder about purpose. Psalm 139, 13 through 16. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. And so forth, right? And then, yeah, so those are, those are the ones that I want to highlight. But essentially, I believe that you live totally different when you are born again, when you are given new life, when you become spiritually alive, when you start awakening to spiritual things, when you start maturing and growing up in God, when God starts walking, when you start walking with God, when you start understand how God speaks to you, studying the word and having word become active in a life for you, applying the word to your life, practicing what you see, declaring things, praying, watching God show up for you and just lavish goodness on you. Very different way of showing up. So I want to highlight some of the things that the Holy Spirit will do because the Holy Spirit will reveal your gifts to you, confirm your gifts, um, point you to the right actions in the next steps, reveal who you are, give you the vision, just bring these things that we need. Holy Spirit will bring those to you. The sense of meaning, the sense of success, fulfillment, all of that, so that you're not out in the world chasing. You're just seeking the kingdom first for the kingdom. Oh, that's such a good one. Oh my goodness. Let me grab it. Dun, dun, dun. For the kingdom. You know the scripture? The kingdom. Da, da, da. Righteousness. There it is. Okay. Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So you get busy about kingdom things. You start living 
on earth as it is in heaven. So you are, you are operating under a different government, under a different place, under a different system. Okay. So you're operating very different in the world, but here's some of the things that Holy Spirit will do. Holy Spirit will allow you to know what God knows. Holy Spirit will reveal who you are. Holy Spirit will confirm who you are. Holy Spirit will guide and establish your steps, give you these promptings, these gentle nudges, bring the meaning, right? Lead you, guide you, intercede for you, allow you to know what God knows, okay? Next, the Holy Spirit will prevent you from doing good things. So we can, and from my story too, you can kind of tell, we can be busy about doing a lot of great things, getting continued education, putting a lot of good into the world, serving, volunteering. We can do a lot of good things, but if that's not why we're here and what our purpose is, we can squander time, energy, and resources too. So he will get you fixed and focused on God things, not just good things. So the things that you're uniquely purposed to do, it's basically changing your scope from really wide to narrow so that you're not a jack of all trades, but you're a master of that thing that you're here to do. Three, gives you access to knowledge beyond your education. I know this to be true. As I mentioned, I was really hungry for information and I've had wisdom. I've had discernment. I've had knowledge that was beyond my education that nobody taught me and a lot of protection also in many different times and seasons and situations. And that has been amazing. Okay. Number four, wisdom beyond your teachers. So even those that you've learned from, you'll have wisdom beyond them. Like it's wild how that happens. And that's biblical. I'm not making this up. All right. And then lastly, understanding of principles so that you can judge all things in life. So just this capacity to know what it is that you should do. Not, not all things are good for you to do. The apostle Paul talks about that in the word really plainly, <laughs> right? Like you can do many things, but not all things are permissible for you to do. So it's really important to know, like when you have vision, your life becomes really simple because you don't really get busy about things you're not here to do. That's how I look at that. Okay. So a couple of points to remember the secret about you is hidden, of God, hidden in God. So that's why delighting in the Lord, fellowshipping in the fellowshipping with the Lord, developing a friendship with the Lord, growing in closeness and intimacy with God I believe that's the safest place to be. There's nothing like having this wisdom, this knowledge, this connection, this presence. It's a privilege and it will guard and protect your life. Um, few have known the mind of the Lord. So we can't know the mind of the Lord unless Holy Spirit is revealing that to us. And that's why Holy Spirit is living on the inside of you when you're born again. So the secret to know the truth about you is with Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the treasure that is in you. And as you develop relationship, Holy Spirit will develop you and lead and guide you to those places that have been planned and prepared for you. So you can do these good works that God set before you, right? And you can do it in the right time, in the right ways, with the right carrying capacity, if you want to look at it that way. Okay. So I, I guess some plot points to highlight. Holy Spirit will reveal your assignment, really your role in the kingdom and give you daily direction. So here is this vision for your life. Here's revelation about how that fits in the, the greater scheme of things. And I will help you with self-discipline, self-control, the fruit of the spirit and give you daily direction so that you can perform these good works that God prepared for you beforehand. Right? So Holy Spirit will make you a person of value because a lot of times what we do is we try to go out and we try to follow these formulas in the world. We try to read all the personal development books and get all the self-help and, you know, apply everything that we can learn from different institutions and all the things, right? We try to seek success and we, we often can get really stressed out because we're not living with that conviction. Okay. So rather than seeking that, Make yourself a person of value. Don't seek success. And you can only do that, in my opinion, when you're getting this revelation, when you have this daily direction, when you're on assignment every day, when you're in constant remembrance of that. So what I love about this is it makes life really simple. 
you just focus on the one thing. There's really not a lot that you have to do. And I know that that used to be so overwhelming. There used to be so many things that I felt like I had to do or I had to get done or I had planners with all these things that would just spill over into all these other days. And I just felt like a workhorse, right? And those were really good things, right? Like you could look back on that and not regret that, but it wasn't fueled by purpose. It wasn't fueled by the spirit. And unless the Lord builds the house, it will not stand. And I just got tired of building and building and building. Because if I do it in my own strength, it's on me, right? But if God is building, God's got it. God will do the heavy lifting. I just walk it out, but God will do the heavy lifting. And I'm much more about that. And that's how it gets easier. It's not that you work less necessarily, but it's you work differently. You operate by a different operating system, truly. So I hope this blessed you. The secret of who you are is hidden in God. And ultimately, you can have many great teachers, a lot of great exposure, but it's you in that relationship where God reveals little by little and guides you to your next step one step at a time. So I hope this simplified or maybe even reinforced something for you. If you want to dive deeper with God or kind of do a, a deeper study or really learn things like reclaim your spiritual authority, co-laboring with God, just having more fellowship time with God, God's Vibes Matter books are over on julianapage.com. So those are great resources. I've got courses over there and coaching packages. So make sure to check those out too. And if you want to follow me for daily life happenings, you can follow me. I'm mostly active on Instagram at Miss Juliana Page. And I think that's it. So if you haven't yet, make sure you, sus you subscribe. And if this message blessed you, make sure that you copy the link and share it with a friend. All right, guys, until next time.